Hey Low Winners, it's Low86 here with another video. Uh, we've got a big topic today. Wanted to play a little bit of catch up with you guys first. I got Winston here, obviously. So hey guys, I'm just here to chime in a little bit. No, you can chime in as much as you want. Okay. Uh, I want to catch up with you guys a little bit. Um, I've been under the weather. This is going to be a full on edited video. Unfortunately, uh, both of my daughters are quite sick. It is not what you think it is. Don't it's say not the word. Not, not the, the, yeah, okay. Um, so I've been taking care of them, basically staying up all night with them as they uh, cough their brains out. It's kind of sucky. Mm -hmm. Talk to the doctor. There's no uh, nothing we need to do right now, but it is a lot of work. And I'm a very light sleeper, as you are yourself. I yep. think you can attest to this as a new, being a new father. Every time we go on a road trip and we stay in the same mm -hmm. hotel room, don't worry, separate beds. Mm -hmm. But like he's either like vaping before bed, which is super loud. <laughs> and so I'm just falling asleep and it's like, <laughs> and it's like ah. You know, rolling around, or I'm snoring, or one of us. Right. Is, it's like we it, take turns. Yeah, bothering we literally each other. cannot sleep. <laughs> no. Anyway, we should probably just get separate rooms. We're not, <laughs> we're not rich enough yet. No, not yet, not yet. Uh, so yeah, I've been dealing with that. You're a new father. You understand what it's mm. like to, uh, you know. Oh, it's terrible. With a kid. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, yeah. That being said, I want to give an update on the people that threw us some bones, some money for the masks and hand sanitizer on the ground. Mm -hmm. Our contact Mickey has managed to purchase them. Mm -hmm. through eBay, of all places. It's weird, eh? Um, and he got them through his like motorcycle shipping contacts. Mm -hmm. They are now currently being distributed to people that in need of them, which, is which important. I think is fantastic. But that is only one tiny place in China, unfortunately. Sure, sure. So we've had to kind of resort to that method to get that stuff on the ground. Uh, we are currently tracking our packages. We sent a bunch of uh, supplies to China. Still hasn't happened still Still at, uh, what's it called, customs. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, we'll be chasing that up as well. Now, I uh, want to go by ahead. the way. Sorry, I just wanted to say that uh, the government is now actually actively seizing masks mm. that they can then redistribute. So mm. I think that might have fallen into that. They might probably. be just they're seizing people's private stuff, right? Um, and so they probably saw, oh, here's a box full of masks. Right. Let's take it ourselves, and then we can, you know, use it. Right. Uh, I want to give you an update on that too. Mm -hmm. um, you have? Do you have one of those uh, legit ones laying around? I thought I did a minute ago. What did I do with it? Oh well. Was he was actually wearing it to protect himself against me. Yeah, because he's sick. Um, yeah. Well, whatever. Oh, there it is. It's under oh, your it's keyboard. Under this keyboard. Give me a second. Here we go. Stay away from this mask. I'll show it. This okay, is my sorry, protection sorry. here. Everyone, this is an N95 mask. Okay, you're supposed to put the strap first, mm. but whatever. Strapping young lad. Pinches down here. Yeah. And then you can breathe nice and laborly because it's actually pretty <laughs> difficult to breathe through this thing. Yeah. But now, it works. what I wanted to tell you guys is we managed to get some of these yeah. just for our own personal consumption. Did we actually, sorry, we actually bought a whole bunch of these prior to this whole crisis mm -hmm. because I use these when I'm working on the car and like doing sanding yeah, and, and, painting and painting and grinding. Yeah, so. so they ran out of those, obviously, as mm -hmm. we've been covering. And my wife managed to find a different brand. Now, mm -hmm. when she ordered them, she ordered them actually from Walmart. Okay. Okay. And... The picture and the description was a brand of N95 surgical masks. Right. Not 3M. No. Okay. And it was called D something. It was a medical supply company in America. Mm. Legit. And this is from Walmart. Okay. From Walmart. Ships them. And this is what shows up at our office. Okay. Face mask molded. Face mask molded. So R I looked up. Rin so I looked it up. It's okay. a dude in Brooklyn. Mm hmm who owns a five different Chinese companies. Uh, he's, a, he's an American dude, obviously. Okay. But he has like five different like OEM companies. And I guess, I, I mean, I don't want to make speculate right now, but he's managed to make connections with Walmart. And watch this. Okay, watching. These are not N95 masks. Okay. I'll give you one to sample. Thanks. Here. See, Which I can't escape them? getting sick anyway. Yeah. So. Well, it's very cheap. Let's try it out. <laughs> I can it see doesn't, through your face. It doesn't seal at all. No, and get this. What? So this is, look at this glue. No, no, no. Look at this glue. <laughs> that, never mind that. This thing doesn't even it doesn't, work. It doesn't. It's so weak. It doesn't hold down. I mean. Number two, we've we've actually, Vivi's dealt with counterfeit masks in China before. She yeah. said they are better quality than this. Look at this. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. This is what's being sold as a legit N95 hang mask Hang on a second. Also, take a look at this. It's stapled through. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it, you can see that the hole. 
Wouldn't so what, you think a staple of a mask would be not to staple a hole through? It's kind of like it? stapling a condom to a piece of right. paper. You know, you kind of defeating the purpose. De- defeating the purpose. I can see through these holes that the staples made. Right. So I <laughs> yeah, this is just yes. garbage. Uh, it's fake, right? It's got to so, be. Renso, and this is the first thing Vivi notices, Rensho. It's obviously a Chinese brand. And these are, in fact, made in China. Mm-hmm. And these are being sold as doctor, like, medical-grade surgical masks, N95. Yeah. That's what's being sold on Walmart. I'm chasing this up with Walmart right now, yeah. uh, imported by Renso Healthcare Supplies. Yeah, see? Can you okay. rip that? No. No. I can't. I can't actually rip it. I'm not trying to be, like, I'm not putting this on for the camera. So I'm putting these guys on blast. I believe you, don't worry. No, it's not coming um, apart. I'm putting these guys on blast. This is ridiculous. Yeah. And there's people collaborating with these like really despicable Chinese companies that try to pass this stuff off. Yeah, because look at this. This is the way this is attached. Is it's it's heat, heat bonded on here. You can see. Right. And so there's no hole. That's well, very important, right? It's super important. I mean, what's the point of a mask if it's got a hole for the, the crap to get in and it doesn't seal on your face anyway? No. This is ridiculous. Can you believe that? Like, what did that, that would do nothing. No, and, like, I thought you were just over-exaggerating no. when you told me about this, but... I left it to the live show for you to see, okay. to witness yes. this. So we have 50 pieces of those, and I guess, you know, they better be uh, on the lookout for my email. They, I, I recommend you guys reply, because I think this is going to cause some serious shit, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely insane that this is, like, what local Americans are actually buying yeah, it's ridiculous. to protect themselves from this. You don't it's need just, to wear that anymore. I know. You, you only actually need 3Ms, to be honest. That's, sure, but that they weren't available. Yeah, yeah. So this is what we got as a backup. There's right? a ton of fake 3Ms going around now. For sure. And what's even worse is in China, they, they've uncovered quite a few cases now of people selling used masks. Yeah. So, and that's up, I read this hilarious headline. It was, I think it was New York Times something. It was like, people are selling used masks, which may contribute to the spread of the, the, the illness. No shit. No. no really? Shit. Because first of all, they probably have the virus in them. And second right. of all, they become useless after they get wet or been used for a while. Second update is um, we are now at a, over a full month of demonetization. Yes. So I wanted to say thank you to the people that have actually tried to help us out. Number two, help the people that have tried to help the people out that we have on the ground getting masks out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's pretty crappy when you go onto your YouTube video manager and there's like five straight videos with yellow. Yellow means demonetize. Well, even my wife did that video about masks running out in China. Mm-hmm. Uh, about you know talking about her colleagues that got demonetized as well it just it's a weird situation it seems like if you want to even touch on the subject you're right. just going to lose your monetization which is annoying right that's life um so i want to say thank you to the people that super chatted already dion chapman mm-hmm. says uh, overloaded on china's bs i think we need to have a holiday from china after that blows over when is india again um i know it's insane but there's so many people like relying on us for information yeah. so that's why we're covering this right now can we can we give them a hint no of what money. we're doing next next week uh yes but i'm not going to say a location but i will say we are going on an adv trip doing an adv trip we, we need a break from everything too we're going to be on all of our channels live streaming during mm. the trip we've got a very 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 special place to interesting to. place very special uh, so that, that'll be cool. Uh, India is definitely in 2020 plans. We're going to go in the dry season, though. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank you very much. And Mark on Films, I can't see your comment right now. It'll snap up eventually. Now, mm-hmm. today I want to talk about something. If you guys have been paying attention to the news, I think you'll notice that there is a very slow trickle of information coming out. Do you remember? We were just inundated with stuff yeah. from China. Um, people were not able to have a transparent view on this whole you know, mm-hmm. scenario. But what was happening is just everyone was talking about it. And right now... The narrative has been controlled so badly that, you know, there was speculation that after that doctor died, Mm -hmm. there was going to be this huge uh, situation where everyone's going to have their eyes on this, right? There's going to be a lot more transparency because China knows that it made a massive mistake trying to silence this guy. Right, right. Even the Chinese netizens, which was very rare, we're talking about people that, like, really nationalist people that hate our guts, Mm -hmm. were completely flip-flopping and criticizing the government. Which we were surprised about. Absolutely. I had a big talk with my wife about the other day. She doesn't think that will materialize in anything. But the fact that that happened, that you don't usually see that. No, it's a big challenge for the, the government. Yeah. So the, the worst part about that is actually since then, it didn't become more transparent. It became less transparent. There's more arrests. Yeah. There's more censorship. There's more crackdowns in the media. The WHO is not even allowed to go into Wuhan or Hubei yet. Yes. Right? Which is the epicenter, which is where we need our data from. Absolutely. Right? So all of this has culminated into this massive cover-up campaign, and it's actually working. Well, that's what China does. I think you've noticed in the past with other things. You know, I've been 
<clears throat> I was in China during the 2008 mm. Sichuan earthquakes. Uh, I was there. I've been there since 2006. Mm. I've seen a whole bunch of things come and go. Uh, the 2009 H1N1 thing, mm. everything. In the beginning, I think they don't really know what kind of strategy they're going to use. So everything's mm. kind of free reign for a couple of days to a week or mm. maybe two weeks max where like the people on the ground are sharing videos, talking about it, etc. Then they decide, okay, this is causing too much panic or this is not making us look good or this is what we need to go after. And then when they get all their ducks in a row, they go after it and within a day, they've like censored everything, all certain keywords, certain things are completely blocked, scrubbed off the internet, articles, videos, people get arrested and d detained and disappeared. Um, and then everything's like fine, you know, ignorance is bliss. I actually wanted to, I uh, thank you for bringing that up because this is perfect. Can you get in the media and just scroll mm -hmm. to the Wall Street Journal article real quick before okay. we get into the meat? I wanted to cover this because I, I found a very good excerpt uh, in okay. Chinese that I translated. Okay, let's uh, put it in there. All right, so if you guys don't know this, uh, the Wall Street Journal, a reporter made an article about this situation. Mm -hmm. And he used the phrase, the sick man of Asia. Uh, right. Very contentious remark. And I do think that is in poor taste. It's in poor taste. Um, that being said, the backlash faced uh, the, the Chinese government threw at them, threw mm -hmm. at America, threw at uh, all of these people, right? They mm -hmm. expelled them from, from China. Canceled their journalist visas. Canceled their journalist visas and stuff over this very innocuous article, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because if people are not allowed, and this is, this is what I want to talk about, it's like censorship abroad. Yes, mm -hmm. they're, they're throttling information that people in China can, can get out, right? But what's happening now is you're seeing a downtick in international media because they're actually kind of threatened in a way. Yeah. I mean, if your staff is going to get hit with something like this, why would you bother covering it, Look, right? Well, China's got the third worst, you know, freedom of press in the world. Right? Yeah, it is. It is. All, yeah, it's 11 out of 100 on the Freedom House Index, right? And I thought this is interesting. So I'm going to read this. The Freedom House, by the way, guys, is a fantastic yearly report where they go through each country around the world mm -hmm. and they talk about economic freedom, uh, financial freedom, um, what's it called, business freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, religion, politics, that kind of stuff. And consistently, like Scandinavian countries rank the highest. But sure. China has dwindled. Like it was, it hovered, I think it hovered around like 23 out of 100, which is abysmal, sure. right, when we were there. Mm -hmm. And now it's at 11 yeah, out of 100. Bad. It's bad. And uh, this is an interesting little blurb that I want to read. It says, the Freedom House report summarizes how the CCP, which is the Chinese government, suppresses critical news coverage abroad into four categories. Number one is direct action by government, uh, Chinese government representatives. So you have like diplomats and stuff like that that go have meetings with these people, maybe people that meet with the WHO types, yeah. where they sit down face to face and like, you can't do this, right? Sure. You're going to lose so-and-so, whatever, that we give you, right? Right. Uh, number two is economic carrots and sticks to encourage self-censorship by media owners. And this is what we're seeing here. That's like what happened with the NBA and stuff. Yes, it's self-censorship at that point. Yeah, because they're like, oh, well, you've upset the feelings of the Chinese people and mm. you've hurt the feelings. Uh, we're not going to show your stuff anymore. We're not going to let anyone buy tickets to your show. Bam, done. Right, and not to bring up what about ism, but if you go on the Chinese internet, you don't have to read the Chinese versions. Go on like Global Times and stuff. Like 90% of the coverage of any country around the world is horrifically negative. Yes. I would say xenophobic and sometimes even racist. Not right? sometimes, it is. Many times even racist. The Global Times, which is the mouthpiece of the Chinese CCP. Communist Party, um, constantly puts out disgusting racist articles all the time. For sure. And my point mm -hmm. is that um, it's very apparent that these other companies and the uh, Westerners mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. will take this whole race card thing and be like, oh, crap, we really screwed up this time. Look yeah. what happened in Denmark, right? Thank God they didn't apologize about that cartoon. Yeah. Maybe that was in poor taste to like deface a flag or something. But let's be honest here. If you go on Chinese media and make a comparison, they can't. The Chinese government having sole ownership of the media can't use the race card argument because they use it all the time by themselves. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> something I put on my Instagram, for those of you who don't know, both of us are covering this thing on our Instagram, you know, quite a bit. And mm, yeah. something I put up yesterday, which is a very, very much what you're talking about here. Let me find it. Um, I have a tweet here from, uh, you know, a, a Mexican official. Okay. And he said, in 2009, H1N1, against WHO recommendations, China placed all Mexican nationals in China under quarantine. I know I was there. I remember this. I had Mexican friends. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Canceled direct flights to Mexico. Oh, that was in 09, right? Yeah, 2009. I do remember that. Stopped issuing visas to Mexicans. Closed consulates in Mexico. China never admitted it was wrong or apologized. But what we're hearing is that this guy was responding to 
a spokesperson, um, you know, Chinese spokesperson who was like, um, FM Wang noted certain country has turned a blind eye to WHO recommendations and imposed sweeping travel restrictions against China. This kind of overreaction could only make things even worse. It's not the right way to deal with the pandemic. So China is lashing out and criticizing a country that they were targeting America here for doing the exact same thing that they did. But they did it even worse and very blatantly. Like America hasn't said, OK, no Chinese are allowed to get visas now. You know, no flights to China completely cut off straight away. Let's quarantine every Chinese national in the country. I know, and it goes even further than that because they, the National Party Council, they actually postponed because of the danger of this, yes. this epidemic, right? Yeah. Yet at the same time, in the same breath, they criticize America or Western countries for limiting flights mm -hmm. from China. How does that make sense? So you're... You're protecting your elite, the top yes, one percent yes. of communist officials, to keep them safe and not get not get sick. But yet, it's racist to not allow flights out of China to that will potentially spread the illness. Well, how many people are they not in, not allowing to move? Like that's what I'm how saying. How many millions and millions right. of people are currently stuck in their homes and forced into quarantine, and yet they're complaining about uh, other countries not wanting potential infections to fly over? Right. Uh, the other examples that they used, uh, mm -hmm. Freedom House, they said uh, the Chinese government uh, uses indirect pressure applied via proxies and cyber attacks, mm -hmm. physical attacks and online verbal abuse, which were very, you know, we understand quite well. Oh, yes. Uh, it's just funny how the narrative has changed, though. In the beginning, there was so much denial and we were being called like fear porn mongers and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then now it's you're seeing a, <laughs> a slowdown in what the Wu Maos have been able to actually pin on us because mm. they've seen how badly it's become. Yes. And it went from this denial thing to like, holy crap, this is actually a really big deal. Now they're questioning like, why did this actually get so bad? Mm -hmm. But now you're seeing Western media, I think, getting really threatened by this kind of stuff, right? And um, mm -hmm. this is interesting. So when the uh, they were expelled from China, these Wall Street Journal sure. uh, journalists in China, yes. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, he claimed that it was racist and all this kind of stuff, which is whatever. But there, this is a really good, uh, a really good, a really good thing about this. They are claiming the race card, but we always know that the Chinese government doesn't care if people are racist against Chinese people. They don't care if people are demeaning to Chinese people. Mm -hmm. They actually only care about if it goes against Xi Jinping's rhetoric or sure. the CCP's best interests. That's actually the only thing they care about. You could, I, I make this claim all the time. If you were an actual racist, like a despicable piece of shit racist that wanted to go around and point out really horrible things that aren't necessarily true about Chinese people, the Chinese government, unless it suited them, they wouldn't give a shit. No. Sure. It's when you start pointing fingers and asking questions as to why the CCP is still this at the forefront of power and all these bad things remain ha keep happening. We're going to get into that. But this is the quote from the, uh, the foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. And this is how this is their guidelines for how China should be portrayed in the media. And this is what they send to foreign media right. when they talk about China. So we can use an example. Let's say this would be sent to CNN if they're going to cover a story about China. Yeah. China should be portrayed as a civilized country. And just keep this in mind. Should be. This is like a rule. Yeah. Should be portrayed as a civilized country featuring a rich history, ethnic unity, cultural diversity, and as an Eastern power with good government, a developed economy, cultural prosperity, national, national unity, and beautiful scenery. China should also be known as a responsible country that advocates peace and development, safeguards international fairness and justice, and makes a positive contribution to humanity. You know, the problem is that every single thing they want to claim there it's, could pretty much be debunked. Why would you send that uh, mm. directive if it wasn't? True, it's kind of right? like, like if you, <laughs> no, seriously, if you've got like a very short, ugly man who is very rich, and mm. it's like, if you're ever going to write an article about me, you must refer to me as tall, mm. handsome, slender, and well built. It reminds me of you didn't watch the show, but Narcos. Like if you look into how Pablo Escobar, and he had a very fragile ego, mm -hmm. and so everyone was very guarded around him. So he'd have people below him alone. It's just like the CCP, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost like a narco state in a way, without the drugs. Yeah, yeah. And they just they protect Xi Jinping. They protect the government. They have to make sure that these lies are being exacerbated sure, and put out, sure, right? Sure. So that people buy this image. I just thought that was really pig-headed and hilarious that they need to put a directive out for foreign media it's, outlets. It's one of those things where you have to like sign a non-disclosure agreement when you're going to have an interview or something and, and they say, oh, you're, you are not allowed to talk about this, you're not allowed to talk about that, and they send it to you first. Mm. You have to sign off on it before they interview you. It's a very similar kind of a thing, right? Absolutely. So that's what they're sending to all the big media people out there, and hey, you must you know, say China's a civilized country. Right. 
Now, the, the beef of this video, I think we got a lot of people in here now, so we mm -hmm. can actually get into this sure. uh, topic. It's why China's countermeasures cannot be trusted. Now, both you and I have noticed a huge uh, problem with the way this is being covered, where everyone, even people that are kind of anti-CCP, mm -hmm. are like, well, can you imagine in my country, this would never be able to be fruitful, sure, right? Sure. This would never happen. And we want to talk about why these countermeasures just don't work. Yeah. So. A lot of people laud one-party states just for their uh, efficiency. So when the top down says, hey, listen, we got to get this done, they get it done, right? Yeah. In some ways, that's true. Mm -hmm. It's usually uh, with poor quality Correct. <laughs> and lack of oversight. But we've lived in China long enough to understand that when there is a law or something that people are feel fearful of or like, you know, they feel like kind of pinned down because something becomes illegal, there's always a way around it. Right? That's, that's the thing. There's always a way around it. What the government says is never really what turns out to happen in practice. Right. They'll be like, you are not allowed to drink in public. It's against the law. Meanwhile, everywhere you go, people right. are drinking in public. Right. That's just an example. Right. We're going to go through real world examples, yeah. but I want you to run this media here. Yeah. This here is a, a woman that is uh, breaking through the quarantine. Yeah, this is the quarantine. Okay. They don't want people in and out of this area because of the the coronavirus obviously so if you're mm -hmm. talking about a country that could only do this and look at how awesome they are maybe it's a little draconian but look at you know the, the measures they put in place and how successful they are this is one video mm. out of probably thousands of scenarios mm. where people continually usually a lost generation you can tell their age there yeah, yeah. Uh, older people will continually just break this rule right well look I know people have been watching these videos of people being welded in and like we we'll got some of those yeah. yeah locked into their their homes but you know, you know, there's a reason for that. It's because they don't listen. That's what I was going to say is that you wouldn't have to have such draconian methods that you people out there keep chiding yeah. if people actually followed the rules. Because in China, there is no rules. Mm. It's called guanxi. It's called connections. Yeah. And if you have connections or you have the wits about you to just not give an absolute shit about the repercussions, mm -hmm. you can get away with anything. Correct. Anything. Correct. People are so used to being able to do what they want. They don't like to be, you know, to do what they're told. China does kind of run in this almost like an organized chaos. Right. I mean, so you're going to champion this. Look at like a lot of people maybe abroad will be like, look, they can get away with this. Human yeah. rights prevents us from taking very draconian methods yeah. like tying well, a man up. Yeah. Well, why, why was he tied up? Let's explain. Because he, he didn't wear a mask. We've seen a bunch of this where people in public are not wearing masks. Mm. They refuse to wear masks. And so it gets to a point where... They have to get beaten up or arrested by the police or whatever to force them to wear a bloody mask. This would not happen in a normal, you know, civilized, straightforward society where people have some sort of idea about showing compassion towards others. Because if you're going to go out in public in a situation like this and you're told by your government or just common sense that, hey, there's this massive disease going, sorry, virus going around, wear a mask because it can protect others, not just yourself, protect others. You would do it. There's no reason why you wouldn't do it. But some people are so stubborn, they refuse to do it because they just don't want to. I think Taiwan is a perfect example of a place where everyone's looking out for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a civil society where people, it's not its not an oppressive dictatorship. People can have the option to do whatever they want. Sure. They don't need to get, they can't get tied up, right? Yeah. But you won't see people doing this because they're not selfish. And guess what? They're still Chinese people. I'm going to drive this home a million times. Mm -hmm. Taiwanese people are Chinese. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why do you not see this kind of stuff ha happening there? Because they didn't go through that communism. That communism crap. And here, what you're seeing here is the go to way to punish someone in China is to make an example of yes. them. So you tie them to a post. Why not? And they very often do hang like a placard around them or something. Or if they steal chickens or something, they tie them up and tie a dead, the dead chicken around his yeah. neck or That's the very dogs common, or yeah. whatever. So it's, it's just kind of. You know. So the funny thing is that these leaked videos that you see, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people abroad will see these and say, listen, uh, the Chinese government totally doesn't want people to see this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But look at what they can actually get away with. This is help preventative measures, right? And that's just not the case because these are being used as soft power. Why do yeah. you think these are allowed to be show up on my WeChat? Exactly. Because they want... They, they're bragging in a way. Look yeah, at how like, we can oh, contain we, this. We, we actually teaching this guy a lesson. Right. And that's yeah. just ridiculous. All right, yeah. keep going. I want to show you another example. Okay, pause this. Yeah. So everyone said only a one-party state, only the CCP could build a hospital in 10 days. Mm. Would you like to see the hospital now? <laughs> Why don't you run the clip? Yeah. Well, they certainly didn't prevent against leaks. And guess what? When you have Chabadoa, and yeah. Chabadoa means half-assed, mm. build craftsmanship, 
you put millions of dollars into live streaming how successful this was. You can pause it. Yeah. How successful this was, this uh, building all these I emergency want hospitals. To pause it on the door so people can see it is actually that place. Right. Yeah, there's some text on the door there. Mm. Anyway, yeah, please continue. So when you have <laughs> a screaming child outside, mm -hmm. um, when you have a situation where the government's putting millions and millions of dollars into mm -hmm. building and promoting, I'm going to say even promoting, it is. look at this, it's on every single TV outlet, they're live streaming like 10 hour live streams of this construction progress, only the CCP could do something like that because they don't have to cut through all this red tape, they don't have to ask for permits, they don't have to do this, this is what big government can do for you. Yeah, this is what big government can do for you. You've built death camps mm -hmm. where people go in they're in massive rooms. Either there's ones or there's massive rooms where everyone's cross infecting together. Yeah, yeah. And number two, you have these ones that are like these little, basically little jail cells, more sure. or less, where you get food in and out. And they're crumbling already. It's like when we go see new building developments, million dollars a pop, and they follow, they follow, uh, fall completely apart, fall yeah. apart after three years. Well, you see, this whole building a hospital in ten days was a fantastic diversion. It was, and it was something that the government could show look at this amazing th feat that we're pulling off but you have to understand the same time that they're live streaming and drone flying and building all this crap they didn't have enough masks for the doctors there weren't enough test kits all this so all these resources that were being spilled into this and this big tv extravaganza live stream around the world look at what we're doing and yet the very basic things couldn't be met the right. very 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 basic things like masks for the doctors you know why is it that we are not focusing on that it's because we have to focus on this big spectacle for sure and it's like when you see yeah. a city in china crack down on something mm -hmm. they'll ignore everything else and put all their attention and when the when the government guy shows up into one thing like let, let's say they had to have a nice park they yeah. completely let everything else go to waste sure and they start painting the grass green with spray yeah. paint spray it's paint. that yeah. bad it's mm -hmm. it's post soviet it's like face beyond belief mm -hmm. trying to impress people you know yeah and to go back to this like we we just saw the Western media and like everyone around the world just being duped by this construction project saying like what an amazing job it is. And people, I, I swear to God, maybe a thousand people linked that, that live stream to me. You too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, all the time. And immediately, we, we don't want to be sour pusses, but we saw that immediately. And we're like, we know where this is going to go. Look where it went. Look, let's also just be honest. Uh, Dion Chapman said something in the, the chat there that just caught my eye. Okay. We've seen what happened on that cruise ship. Mm where you've got a lot of people in a confined space. Right, Diamond even, Princess. Yeah, even though they're in separate rooms. Right. Obviously, this thing must be airborne or aerosolized or whatever, but because they're all close by, we're seeing all these infections. Right. Which is, it's troubling. Right. So wh what happens if you stick them all into these hospitals where it's all open plain? You've seen the big sort of quarantine areas. They also, they've converted gyms and... It's worse know, than like 1910 era. Yeah, stuff. it is. They, at least back in, you know, the Spanish flu and stuff, they hung curtains up mm. in between the patients and stuff. If you look at the old pictures, right. and if you look at the old pictures from the Spanish flu and you look at the new pictures from the quarantine areas in China, it's bad. You're putting sick people, yeah, Chabador, you're putting sick people next to potentially not sick people that right. have just come in with a fever or something and they've been put in the same room. Of course, they're going to catch it. So what you're doing is you're actually aiding in the spread of the disease. Right. But I think it's that mentality Where's... of let's just get everyone that's potentially sick out of the way, move them away from the, the, the populace so that, that we can get our factories and stuff back up and running and we don't actually care what happens to them in those Dude, camps. they don't and look remember the beijing olympics they went around and hunted through poor people villages and made them all move back to yeah. their hometowns i remember i was there it's like rounding up rabid dogs it was a huge them. crackdown on foreigners as well yeah they did stupid things like oh you you want to get a new visa you're not allowed to get a visa unless you go back to your home country. they were worried that like foreigners were going to like put out the torch and stuff you know what I mean? dude they locked me in the un well they tried to lock me in yeah. the university and i managed to escape but the thing is it's like they would not let us go to watch I got the torch bearing because we're foreigners right i got locked in the university uh with my students in inner mongolia when a dude, um, there was like a protest with ethnic mm -hmm. Mongolians. I, I had no idea what was going on. I had yeah. nothing to do with this. Yeah. But you know what the great part of that story, and that's what we're going to come up to next. Mm -hmm. I got out. Yeah. I got out. And you so think you think these roadblocks and you think all these preventative measures that we're going to show, you can run the media. Yeah. All these preventative measures that everyone keeps like, you know, applauding China for. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a, a, a large clip of all these welded in houses. These yeah. are these clips are allowed to escape as bragging rights for the Chinese government at this point. Yeah, it's uh, like, people think it's it under control. Right. People think it's draconian, but they're also saying, well, at least they won't spread it around the world. You know, this very bigoted idea of like, mm -hmm. screw these people. Like, yeah, at least exactly. they're taking care of it. But as you can see, people do have ways to get out. 
Of course I do. And this wouldn't have to happen if it was properly dealt with in the first place, mm -hmm. right? Correct. This is, we, we, we're like a broken record when we say this, but China waits until something gets so bad mm -hmm. that it's already lost a bit of face and has to do something insane that you wouldn't even consider doing Correct. to stop the problem, right? Um, so we're going to talk about the real world examples of why these measures don't work. I really want to drive this home that we have examples of things that we've witnessed in China uh, that we've broken through, that we watch locals break through, to show that these measures are actually surface only. It's, right? it's just like everything else in China. It's the impression of something being, being taken care of is right. more important than it actually Correct. being taken care of. It's all about face. Uh, right now, it's specifically, you're seeing a lot of these reports coming from like the, the big sort of first tier city, San Li Tuan in Beijing, yeah, yeah, yeah. or Coco Park in right. Shenzhen. And it's like, oh, look, we have plenty of fruit in the supermarkets. Yeah, yeah. Everything is great. Meanwhile, that's it's a, North Korea that's, that's a massive disconnect from the, the, the real China. For sure. If you, it's like going into Times Square during a, an outbreak like this and saying, oh, look, everything's great in Times Square. Yeah, there's less people around, um, but I can still go into Macy's and, yeah. you know, buy a chocolate bar. Right. It doesn't matter if everyone else in the country is like in lockdown. It's a, it's a way of actually mm -hmm. like to, when the Chinese government and the, its cohorts only pay attention to areas like that for mm -hmm. propaganda purposes. It's almost, I'm not going to say racist, it's very discriminatory to the, the large populace that does not live a first world lifestyle because China is not a first world country. It is very first world in the middle of Beijing yes, or in Shenzhen, Shenzhen or, or Guangzhou, Guangzhou, but Shanghai. the majority of people don't live there. They don't, but at the same time, they're constantly, um, it's hammered into them to be mm. proud of that as that right. being a, a you know, like a symbol of what China is. Right. So, I mean, you're seeing these makeshift barriers all over the place in China right now uh, where they're trying to, you know, stop the spread, you know, so they don't get out. They put this hammer and sickle flag up everywhere so that so they know it's not uh, like a national thing. It's like a government thing. Sure. Whenever you see this is a little tidbit. Whenever you see the hammer and sickle in China, it means it's a government enterprise. If you see the flag, it's just China. It represents sure, China. Sure. Uh, so this guy is trying to trying where, to rip through here. Where is that license plate? Zhuang? I couldn't I couldn't yeah. see it. Well, it's whatever B. So it means it would be the second most important city in that province. Yeah, so the way license plates works, very interesting. A is the biggest, capital. or the oh, capital, yeah. yeah, the most important city. And then all the other letters are like different cities throughout the province. Yeah, so like in Shenzhen, UAE, well, in Guangdong, UAE would be Guangzhou. Yep, and then UAE the is uh, Shenzhen, yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, so you have all these things where the cops have to, and these, again, these are being spread around as like, look, we're actually getting these people that are trying to escape, yeah. trying to uh, break, quarantine. You know, break quarantine and stuff. Look at how, how well we're doing. Meanwhile, there's people doing it every single day mm -hmm. right not to mention all of the people that managed to leave when they knew this is going to happen and sure. bribe their way out correct right correct. so we can skip forward a little bit i want to show some some okay this is interesting go yeah. back go back and play this um i didn't have the audio in the cell so just say he's speaking english so basically he says uh, dear foreign friends uh because of this whole problem mm. uh it's under control now we've we've managed to contain it so you're welcome back to come to iwu in in uh is it Jiangsu yeah. or Zhejiang? Iwu is where they have all those like factory shops yeah. and they sell to all the traders, African right. traders and well, anyone who buys like knickknacks. Right. Yeah. So I found this very rich, go back. I found this very rich that he mm -hmm. literally, they put, I'm not blaming him, but the government put this out to be like, holy shit, our economy is in the hole because you know it's really bad right now. Mm -hmm. Speculation is that it's at 0.2% growth. Mm -hmm. uh, can't confirm that obviously because they've never been honest about the numbers anyway. Correct. But to put mm -hmm. this out and tell the foreign world outside of China that it's totally fine. It's under containment. By the way, I'm wearing a mask as I'm saying this. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Come back. We need your business. Everything is totally kosher and cool. We, in fact, know it's absolute no. hell on earth right now. No, for sure. Um, so that was just, this is, this is to the point where it's getting dangerous because I saw a propaganda poster today mm -hmm. and it translated as, in one hand, contain the virus, stay safe. In the other hand, go back to work. Yeah. Because they're actually encouraging people to go back to work right yeah, now. Yeah, they are. They have to because... Of course, the economy is more important than the lives of the people to the CCP. Mm. We've seen this over and over again. And anyone, yeah, you can come and try to argue that. But I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Look at what they're doing. They put people's lives at risk just to stabilize the economy. They always have. Because mm, the biggest thing they're worried about is if the economy fails. That's the, first, that's the only time the CCP will lose power. Yeah. When people lose their money. They're not going to be nationalists anymore. No, they, and they aren't. Everyone that I know who's lost money in their you know, investments bitter. and stuff, they change their whole idea of China. Right. You know, it's they always do. how it goes because up until that point, you see the money coming in and you, you cannot help but praise the system because this is the system that's 
that's providing you with wealth. You know, and you can put up with all the crap. And it's kind of like, I think a lot of foreigners, when they first get to China, it's the same deal. Mm. Because you're earning, compared to like local people, you earn a big wage yeah. for doing something like teaching English or whatever. Right. And you can live this lifestyle where everything is affordable. Mm. So you can live this glamorous lifestyle where you could go out to eat every day, drink as much beer as you want, party on, have a great time, you know, be excellent, all that stuff. And you're like, this is great. China's doing something right. China's amazing. Look how good it is. Yeah, we don't need these things like freedom and we don't need freedom of speech. This is what a lot of foreigners I've spoken to yeah. Oh, yeah. like in the beginning. Yeah. They're like, I'd rather have this. What are you talking about? Like, I have to pay taxes back home. This is great over here. Blah, 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 blah. And they coast through having this great time until it gets to a point where they can't do something that they expect they could. There's that delusional phase where you, yeah. I think a lot of people will go in there and it hasn't hit them like poignantly yet. Mm. But we always said, like, yeah, your average person on the street, they're having a pretty good life, they're having mm -hmm. fun and stuff. But when politics catches up with you, the whole world changes. And yeah. you realize actually what a shit show it is yeah. and how governance works in China. It's terrifying. Yeah, like when your your training center or something right. decides, oh, they're just not going to pay for the last three months worth of work. And uh, they're not going to renew your contract or renew your visa and you're screwed. Right. And it happens. It always happens like... I've got so many emails these days from people like that. Yeah. And then they're like, wait, what? But I signed this contract. Right. Like, that doesn't matter in China. No. If you're a foreigner, you can't win. So. No. Um, and then they, they change. Mm -hmm. You know, then they change and they're like, wait, what? Actually, this is bad. I have nothing to fall back on. I have no rights. You know, their car gets confiscated or something weird happens, which they weren't expecting. And they can't rely on their usual guanxi to fix it. That's when they change their attitude because right. there is no like rule of law in China. You you know, very, very seldom do you actually ever come up on top if you have any kind of interaction with the police mm. or the government. But mm -hmm. that being said, you can coast along for a long time and avoid it. Right. You start to just develop in your mind your own ideas of how things work because you're like, oh it's got a Stockholm syndrome in a yeah. way. No, the cops the cops never bother you in China. That's just because you haven't been bothered yet. You know what I mean? That when it when it happens, it's it it's happens. gonna freak you it out, happens. dude. Yeah, yeah. All right, play play through the media okay, here. Sorry, Let's uh, go through some yeah, real get world back in examples here. here. Yeah. So we're going to show some of our own footage here. Yeah, it should be right after this. Okay. Handsome young man. Can't One tell. One of his actually. eyes is bigger than the other. I think he's squinting. <laughs> we don't really need to show this anymore. We've already talked about it. this. Is some food panic going on right now? Yeah. The old meat grabs. We call this meat grab. It's like when the older generation. Let's let's also be honest. Um, just the way food is handled, mm. especially in the wet markets, is the reason why this is... Oh, you can see, right? People use their bare hands to touch and prod the different pieces of meat to try and figure out if that's what they want or not. The next person comes along, does the same. And finally, someone who takes it with them has got like 50 people's fingerprints all over it, you know? So right. It's not to mention things. the vegetables on the side of the road covered in like, mm -hmm. like all the runoff from the drains sure, and stuff. Sure, sure, sure. Anyway, this is, uh, you just let this roll. Yeah. So this is back when uh, Winston and I had our motorcycle shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is actually, um, there's my car. I see that black car on the other side. There's yep. my old car. Um, that is, is it, that's you. Yes, that's, me, that's yeah. you on, on your... Um, my Moriarty. Moriarty. And this is me on that little two-stroke Yamaha scooter I fixed up. Yep. Remember, I painted and everything. So anyway, uh, mm -hmm. this is a bit of our process. So That's our motorcycles place, yeah. were banned mm -hmm. uh, in most major areas in China. But sure. when you go there, you will still always see them, right? Sure. And it will confuse the shit out of you because you're, the law on paper, yeah. you see people, take cops taking bikes. The law on paper is saying, no, you can't ride a motorcycle. But they're everywhere, right? Yeah. And now, then you'll get those foreigners who are like, oh, it's fine. You can ride without a license. That kind of stuff. Sure. I mean, yeah, it goes both ways, right? Sure. So... This is us riding around our village. This is motorcycles are banned here. Yes. Yet they thrive. You'll see them parked on the side of the road, all over the place, right? Yeah, there's someone on a bike. And you lived in Shenzhen, where it's very illegal to have a motorcycle. Yes. Yet you manage to ride to the shop every week on your motorcycle. Yeah, you just need to know how to get around things. And were you just a random foreigner breaking the law, or did is that what people did? Everyone did it. Everyone did it. That's the thing. Right? You, in order to, you know get out of the city you have to leave early before the cops wake yes, up yes. you know and you have to come back late when they're not mm -hmm. around anymore that's pretty much what you do and while you're doing it you're seeing a bunch of other people doing it too it's just in this clip place. you see like this is what people do they're going to go off the main road here and go on these sidewalk areas and this is you just follow the train of people doing that basically yeah avoid the cops avoid the speed cameras all that kind of stuff and that's mm -hmm. that's how you thrive right yeah, yeah. so you keep going now if i had parked my bike on the side of the road yeah, this is now in the downstairs from your old house. Right. So if I parked downstairs, like on the side of the road, yeah. um, I'd get confiscated. My yeah, bike would get crushed. They, they could take your bike because they can't just come and right. like, take bikes. They read the license plate. Or right. 
You're not even supposed to have bikes. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to. I just wanted to talk a little bit. You can pause that. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about that because, um, you know, you, when you see locals doing it, it's not like a, a minority. Everyone breaks the law. Yeah. They know how to. They know how to skirt that law just to just to ride their motorcycle, right? As right, their transport. Right, right. Um, can I give you an example? Sure. So, <clears throat> I was riding back from the shop at night, uh-huh. and there's this. There were these two tunnels. This is kind of close. It was in between Huizhou and Shenzhen because. On the outskirts of Shenzhen, still in like the Longgang areas and the Longhua areas and stuff, Baowan, those kind of places, you could still get away with riding a bike, right? They were not really going to stop you. You still see bikes all over It's illegal. The place. It's completely illegal. Yeah. Um, but as you get closer into the downtown areas, if you go anywhere near Lohu or, or Futian or Nanshan, absolutely not allowed bikes. As soon as you cross a certain border, if they see you with a bike, you're toast. Right. They just take it away. They stop right. you. They'll jump out in front of you. They'll grab you. They'll take the keys out. They'll, you know, you get into a lot of trouble. Um, now, I was actually still in the kind of legal, well, I say legal, the gray area, where it's illegal, but people still do it. And there was a dual tunnel, okay, one to go through, obviously, and it had like three lanes or something, two, three lanes, and one to go out, two or three lanes. So I'm about to go into the tunnel, and I'm riding, and there's like another two or three guys also on bikes, and we're all kind of going, because it's that time of night, we're going to go back. And in front of us is a massive police roadblock. Literally just lights everywhere. They're pulling over trucks or whatever. But obviously the guys on the bikes know if we try to go through that, we're screwed. So what do they do? Everyone starts doing a U-turn. So I follow them. And then they go over the hedges. They find a place. Go over the hedges. And the we, old heads jump. And we rode the wrong way facing yep. traffic. Obviously, like, I didn't go on the road. I went on the... There's like a little... It was actually really difficult because there's a raised platform in the tunnel on the side. Right. It was only about this narrow. And I lifted my bike on there and I was kind of going <laughs> along the side. Because I didn't want to take a chance. No, no. What if a truck comes or something? Of course. Anyway, so we went basically the opposite way through the tunnel. We saw the road buck. We went past. They kind of looked at us and just carried on. They didn't care. And that's how you do things in China. They set things up like, you're not allowed to do this, but if you do something completely different, you can get around it. You know what I mean? For sure. Just a good example. Absolutely. I think it's a great example. Next thing we'll cover very quickly is, um, remember, we got this footage. This is not in some weird place. No, this This is down in downtown Shukou, Shukou, which is like a very wealthy area of Shenzhen. Titty twist a bar from dusk till down. Hmm. <laughs> now, this is not a strip bar, uh, which is also illegal. This is just, uh, it's basically a den of prostitution. It's a girly bar. Yeah. So you get a girl, basically, that uh, drinks with you, mm-hmm. and then you can take them home if you pay them. Yeah, let me explain a little bit about this, sure. okay? Because um, when I first got to Shenzhen, a long time ago, it was a lot more open. And uh, you used to go down to Shoko, and there, there's a lot of oil refinery mm. workers and stuff would come down there. And Shoko's always been the place where all the foreigners mm. hang out. Like, just historically, it's changed... You get a lot more foreigners down in Futian near Coco Park these days mm. or, you know, in Nanshan in general. But Shoko was where the foreigners went. So whenever you went down to Shoko, that's where you could find they had like a subway. And I don't mean like underground, I mean subway, like subway sandwiches. They oh, had okay. Pizza Hut. I think yeah. the first Pizza Hut was there. You know, so you went there for foreign stuff. Yeah. And they used to have what's called Chicken Street because mm. a prostitute in Chinese is a G, you know, mm. chicken. And Chicken Street was basically just these girly bars lined all the way down. Mm-hmm. Straight from, there's like a big hotel there where foreigners used to stay and it would go all the way up near mm. the port there, near the ferry port. So, you know, it's like a stone's throw from the ferry port. It's right next to all the bars, very open. And if you walk down there, you'd get mobbed by Mama Sons trying to drag you in. It was so funny. I tricked so many newcomers and it was like, I'd take them there. We'd go sit and drink in a bar and I'd say like, hey, can you just go to the top of the road there and fetch something from the shop? You know, and I'd like give them some 20 RMB. Right. Can you go get some beers or something? And you see the guys walk and they're swarmed. It's like a zombie <laughs> apocalypse. And all these mama's hands would be like, handsome boy, handsome boy. Right, like try right. to drag you into their um, little girly bar. And the kind of thing that goes on in there is you buy a drink yeah, for yourself. We don't yourself. need to get into details. But... Well, just, just yeah, for yeah. those of you cu- sure. curious. You buy a drink for yourself. You buy a drink for one of the girls who sits with you. And your drink will cost like 10 RMB. Their mm. drink costs 70 or mm. something. It's hugely inflated, but they don't tell you. It's a scam, basically. Mm. But they'll kind of feel you up and they'll do a couple yeah, blah, of dodgy, blah, blah. Yeah, dodgy yeah, yeah. things in there. And then you can take them home if you pay them a certain mm-hmm. amount. This is very common knowledge. Of course, at some point, they had to crack down it. They shut down that chicken street, but then another one opened. So when you play the footage, and the, yeah. the reason we brought this up is not to advertise prostitution in China. It's to tell you that it's completely illegal. It's completely illegal. Yeah, the police do it. Mm-hmm. Everyone's involved in the racket. 
right? Yeah. They're all over the place. You can get it in any massage parlor, KTV, pretty much anywhere in China. You can get prostitution. Rock hard bar. They're really not trying to hide. This is hide. Sorry, hide that. Yeah. Name. By the way, I have to say that the the day we went to go and take、mm-hmm. this footage, you'll see a lot of the places are closed. There's a reason for that.、Mm-hmm. The local police guy who's kind of in charge of this area, obviously they know it's all what's、Horse. going on. They they take kickbacks and they take、yeah. part in all this stuff. Yeah. But the thing is, the the sort of more oversight government guys will be like, okay, we gotta we gotta go down and clean this up, and it trickles down, and then they go and they tell all the bars that are kind of on their payroll, you know, and they'll say, look, make sure you're closed on this day at this time, just close your doors, and the people that are not paying the bribes or whatever, they don't get warned. And so then, when the guys come in, they just nail those guys. You know,、so、we used to、fun. see the cops crack down on like the massage parlors that didn't pay the bribes. Sure. So they didn't have enough local guanxi or、yeah. blah blah. But don't let's not be joking. Like the top government officials participate. In of this course they do.、Too. Of course they do.、Um, What else we got here? It's still rock hard bar. Yeah. Still rock hard bar. This one's Zom- zombie. zombie. Why not bar? I like I like the fact that they come they come up with these random names. Zombie bar. It's right, and this is right next to a Seven Eleven. By the way, this is、sure. not in some alleyway, right? There are some of the prostitutes in the、uh, like.、Uh, In, in yeah, like little, and actually, a lot of them are even foreign. Some yeah, they're Indonesian, Filipinos, Filipino, Indonesians. Obviously, also lots of locals, locals too. too.、Yeah. The majority is locals, but、uh, it's just very interesting. We want to point this out that when you are congratulating or chiding a one-party state for taking such swift action and getting all this stuff done, we actually know how China works. There is、sure. no rule of law. They're doing a bad job. It shouldn't have happened to begin with, and a Western democracy should not be in a position. That we should be congratulating authoritarian rule, where it's very unequal for the people below the CCP's level. Yeah,、right? exactly. It's it's immoral, and we should not be congratulating that because it's not a good method. Yeah, exactly. For those of you who might be wondering, like, are these really the prostitutes? Yes, because I saw them walking out of the, the girly bars,、Correct. and that's why I followed them here. They weren't they weren't customers. No. no.、Um, so yeah, the last thing I want to cover was、uh, there's a huge thing, a huge racket for buying property now. China was very worried. The government was very worried that people were buying property like crazy, like rich people, and then、mm-hmm. flipping it for a profit.、Mm-hmm. So they instituted this law that you could only buy a property every five years、sure. uh, to avoid like some massive was a fifty percent tax or something crazy. So what people were doing was getting married, yeah, it was buying a house, couple, yeah, per couple, yeah. buying a house and then getting divorced. And there was an entire village that married each other, right? Yeah, there was that story four times over, funny, yeah, right? Yeah.、Um, this is just in Huizhou, and the people I know have a lot of people I know have at least six houses,、mm. and they all bought they bought them within a couple of years. They did that. Do you know how they did that? They have connections. They、Absolutely. pay someone, and that's the thing is that in China you can get anything done if you know the right person or pay the right person. So no, this government does not have the people's best interests in mind. No, the people in the government are looking out for themselves,、mm-hmm. their self preservation, and they will screw over anyone to get what they want.、Mm-hmm. And that's、yeah. the lesson to be learned today. Yeah, the lesson to be learned is to not listen to what the CCP says. All this nonsense about oh, we've put this in place and we've stopped this and we've stopped that doesn't actually it's mean bullshit. It's all bullshit. Mean anything? Yeah, you can always get around everything in China. Yes. Yeah. So just take take everything you see with a grain of salt.、Mm-hmm. Uh, push, you know, people that you know that could potentially get some information out. Or we're having, I mean, everyone's having a hard time understanding the real story on the ground. We especially when you see news stories coming out of China saying everyone's ready to go back to work and all this kind of stuff. It's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. We're seeing an exponential growth in. Infections outside of China、yeah. now, which is a good indication as to what's going on inside of China at the moment. I can guarantee you, it's、mm. much worse than you think. Yeah, I mean they're bringing in like mobile,、uh, what do you call them, crematoriums、mm. into Wuhan now. Yeah. Why, if there's only two thousand people that died, why do they need to bring in extra crematoriums with like ton, like tons of daily potential,、mm. tons, yeah, like in weight,、yeah. right? Doesn't make any sense.、Uh, take everything. With a, grain,、uh, with a grain of salt, for sure. I'm gonna get to your questions real、mm. quick here. Thank、yep. you guys、uh, for the people that did it.、Uh, Mark on films. Thank you, Laurie Six, doing such a great job. Thank you,、mm-hmm. uh, David Dempsey. Keep it up. Thank you very much. E O L B. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank you, D P. Keep it up, fan. Been following you for a bit. As someone that used to live in Taiwan and travel through China,、uh, keep sharing truths. Yes, I will, D P. Thank you very much.、Uh, Nappy money. Great job as always, guys. Thank you. Diapers are very expensive, aren't they? Absolutely, super, super expensive. <clears throat>、um, just another patty. Wow, thank you so much, dude.、Uh, big thanks from Indiana. Your coverage and perspective has been second to none, and this is the least we can do. And this is why we're willing to take a hit monetarily right、mm-hmm. now, is because it's just unbelievable the amount of bullshit we're seeing right now. Absolutely. If we don't say anything, it makes me crazy. There's,、know? there's obviously the mainstream media narrative that's out there, which is being fed by what the Chinese government is feeding,、mm. obviously. But then you've also got this new breed of、uh, people just who are deluded、yeah. or on a payroll or something who are trying their best 
to sway the narrative in, in this ridiculous way, like echoing the CCP. Mm. And obviously, we have to just tell things the way they are. That's the only thing we can do. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Bryce Byerly, apologies if you covered this before, but even if it, uh, you have good folks to send masks to in China, how can you keep them from being seized? Well, that's the thing is we only sent money to people that already ship stuff all the time mm. in probably dubious ways, to be honest, a lot sure, of them, sure. uh, to get around customs. Because especially with these motorcycle parts, guys, they they don't pay customs. They'd have to pay like 200% tax. If not only that, like motorcycle parts of that kind you're not supposed to have those bikes and so it's kind of illegal and so they'll yeah. snatch that stuff so it's anyway. it's dubious but yeah. the fact that we've gotten proof that a lot of them have been distributed it makes yeah. me super happy yeah. yeah uh lawrence dawson thank you sent 40 boxes of 3m masks to wife's family and friends all arrived stuffed them in thrift store purses and that's some good that's advice good thank idea. you yeah so now we have an idea i had a guy uh talking to me the other day about him writing office supplies but his wife said no you must write masks on it i thought that was a bit strange yeah uh jim worthy thank you very much hit or miss really yeah mm. Uh, I guess they never miss. Hey, Sea Milk and Winston, glad to support you guys. Thanks for giving us insights on the things in the ground PRC. Here's a little something to help get some cough syrup for the kids. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. My kids are coughing up all their lungs these mm -hmm. days. Joshua Jones, keep up the great work, lads. Thank you. Uh, Heath Runyon, thank, thanks for the honest news about China. Thank you. Um, cold summer, are you still in China? If so, why don't you leave? We are not. We are in LA. Yeah, um, we're currently in LA. and We're going um, on a trip next week, though. Yeah, we are. Not yeah. to China, though. Not to China. No. Kevin Cleese, uh, please send a few of these dollars to your contacts in China for medical personnel, purchase a mask, et cetera. Keep up the good fight. Thank you very much. And this is the kind of thing the CCP will never actually tell their citizens. Mm -hmm. They'll say that honest people like you, Kevin, are doing nothing. Yeah. And the only thing that we can revel in is the fact that we actually did help people. Mm -hmm. And that can make us feel good because we're honest, moral people. I mean, the, the thing is, they've got a selective memory because you never hear about all the help that uh, foreigners... Mm did uh, all the help they gave to china during world war ii and so sure. on. you never hear that uh -huh. ever all you ever hear is that the 200 years of humiliation blah 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 you never hear that oh foreign com countries actually helped us grow mm. our economy grow it's always like we did this by ourselves right foreigners are against us it's a bunch of bullshit there's no like um gratefulness no. for anything reciprocity so, you know all this money that's being sent from charities around the world and all this help that's being offered to china in forms of scientists virologists the who stuff and who is bullshit anyway but i mean all the <laughs> you know all the people that are trying to help here china keeps saying to the local people oh you know the rest of the world's just trying to be racist towards us right they're not ever saying look at how generous the rest right. of the world let's is. actually work together. they keep saying yeah. we need to work on this on a global scale it's a people's war everyone go away though you're yeah. not allowed to see what's going on we're willing to sacrifice the world's citizens mm -hmm. to succumb to this virus mm. because we want it political legitimacy thanks mm. Uh, but yeah, the fact that people are actually helping, mm. we don't we don't need a pat on the back. Mm. We're helping people we know, and I hope that they get some uh, prevention. But we'll keep helping because it's not those. It's people's the right fault. thing to do. Yeah, it's not those people's fault. They got such a shit government. Because remember, a lot of people say, well, it's Chinese people's fault for like letting a government like that rule them. But they don't have a choice. No, they they didn't vote. No, I mean, say what you will. Maybe they, a lot of them kind of think it's the way to go, but they didn't vote for that. They didn't have a choice. And they didn't come to that conclusion themselves. Nope. They're just told what to do. Benjamin Wood, do you think this outbreak will hurt Xi Jinping's reputation? I think nominally, yes, um, but it will be spun. After this all blows over, it will be spun as a victory for Xi Jinping. Yeah, it'll be like he's the one who controlled it. His swift actions, you know, resulted you know that's what's going to be. Blah, blah, blah. And it'll be like Xi Jinping thought number 13. Yeah, it'll it's be updated like, in the book. Yes, destroy viruses with people's war. Right, yes. You know what I mean? Capitalism that's, is bad, some shit like that. That's going to that's gonna be the case. Daniel yep. Wilcox, um, something about presidents. Uh, Roy, thank you, keep it up. And Merry Christmas 2.0 um, with a Bible quote. And okay. Leoria, uh, thank you very much. And the Nomad is here. Really appreciate it. Make sure you didn't have a message there. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for providing honest coverage. If only the actual media and institutions did their job properly. Well, their incentive is not to. And I think, honestly, the CCP has made so many connections, their own Guanxi around the world, that it's terrifying. Yeah, well, I'm glad that we've seen this shift now in America's classifying, like, uh, CGTN right. and stuff as actual propaganda arms of, you know. Because it is. I mean, it you is. can't turn yeah. on the, the news in China and get different perspectives. It's, no, it's all from the CCP. Mm -hmm. But here, you can watch uncensored CCTV footage mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it can shit on America, it can shit on democracy, it can completely try to destroy the fabric of international community. Correct. But they can still play it here because freedom of speech. Yeah, exactly. The so they, they, take, they take advantage of that. Look, being in the game that we're in, especially when we shot our documentaries, it put mm. us on the level of being journalists. Yeah. 
And it's incredibly difficult in China. It's to get permission to do anything is nigh on impossible. Mm. And if it is, it just destroys everything because you have yeah. a minder following you. Um, we had the SWAT team bust into our hotel rooms. We got questioned by the police, the PLA, all this kind of stuff. We had to divert. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Ooh, that some, was scary. Some crazy stuff. To do any kind of journalism in China is difficult unless mm. you're being positive about the CCP. Then sure. they don't care. Right. Then, like me, they'll have you on national TV. They'll have you in the newspapers and all that kind Until of stuff. Until they don't, you don't want you to cover that aspect anymore. Yeah. Then they'll kick you to the yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. And then if they, if they don't like something We'll call it a said, useful idiot. Yeah, it's useful idiots. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's tough. And the fact is they cry foul. Oh, the foreign countries are trying to stifle us and they don't really have freedom of speech, blah, blah, blah. China has no freedom of speech. Zero. China has, you can say what you want if it fits our narrative. And as soon as you stray off the path... We'll arrest you and your whole family. Yep. It's not we'll like... We'll keep you ransom. We'll disappear you. Seriously, Kidnap yeah. your children. Do all sorts of things. Hire the mafia. You get a lot of these apologists who are trying to always say, oh, yeah, well, in the West, you can't really be free. If you try to say something, you'll get a Twitter mob against you, blah, 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 blah. It's not the same as having the actual government come in. And, and legally make you go lean away. Lean on your family. Yeah. Lean on you. Take yeah. you away. Make you... Look at what's happened to all the, all the whistleblowers with this stuff. Where they're, did they all go? They're legitimate moral people trying to do the right thing. Not not to expose the CCP. Yeah. The people just trying to get the information out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, innocent bystander, do you think you'll be allowed back in China with how much you've spoken about the CCP? By the way, I love you guys. Um, at this point, probably they'd let us in, but they wouldn't let us out. I agree. I agree. Um, and uh, why, are, why are the Air China plane tickets more money now? Um... Because there are less of them? I don't know. They uh-huh. have to pay for fuel somehow. I guess. Cichlid, you guys really made a 180 degree change from what you said had said in China. Number one, we weren't allowed to say what we wanted to say. And number and two, it changed. got much worse. Things we did not changed. change. Yeah. That's the thing. Why do you think we changed our videos? We've kind of maintained a consistency throughout. Don't forget, I've been doing these videos since 2000. In earnest, I started at the end of 2008. Mm. I started before that, but you know. That was 2011. Yeah, exactly. From 2008 till now is a long time. It's a lifetime. Okay, think about it. Kids who were born in 2008. Right. Probably of, course, like, of course you're going to change. Like you know, teenagers opinion. by now. Right. You know what I'm saying? That shows you how bad my maths is because it's true. But anyway, the thing is, that's a long time. Things have changed a lot during that time. And I saw things change from one like presidency to another. Think about it. It's kind of like... Things in America are different from Obama to Trump. It's a different kind of a vibe that's going on Yeah, but on it's here. much more different. Yeah, in but a in place China, like it's that. just like you don't have checks and balances of different no. parties and, no. you know, this and that. It's like, okay, you've got one guy and this is what he says. Everyone has to listen. Now you've got another guy. This is what he says. Right. Everyone has to listen. Correct. Xi Jinping changed the way things work in yes. China. And his and cadres. In the beginning, it was gradual. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it didn't seem that it bad. It didn't look that bad in the beginning. But it got worse and it got worse and it got worse. And when you can see the changes with your own eyes in front of you and someone who's been there for a long time, you can't pull the wool over your, someone's no. eyes. No. It's simple. Living for 14 and a half years in a country is a long time. It is. Okay. And you get to understand the country. You get to understand the people. You speak the language. You see what's going on. You get to feel the vibe of what's going on around you. Right. Things changed. So our videos changed. We're not going to suddenly become dishonest or whatever, but things changed, so we changed, and the the good used to outweigh the bad, and then the bad started to outweigh the good. And honestly, yeah, the the more well-known we became and the bigger production stuff we did, Mm. obviously a bigger target we were, but that only further opened our eyes actually to how things work at a higher level, Yeah, because which is very important to understand. The worst thing is, is that especially when I first went to China, I was very much against the idea, you know, the sort of mainstream narrative that China's a bad place. Sure. I was like... You guys are talking shit. You've just never been there. You've got to give China a chance. Mm. You know, you got to understand China. you got to understand China. And, you know, when you're there and you see the, the lively people and the happy people, the, the hospitality that you experience, the free lifestyle right. you can live, you're like, the world's crazy. What the hell? Right. What are these people talking about, like human rights dissidents and human rights this and that? They're talking bullshit. I don't see any of that around me. They obviously don't know China. And you live there long enough until... You kind of go full circle and yeah. you realize, hang on a second, the stuff that the people were talking about before I got here, it's actually true. It's actually true. Yeah. It's a big wake up. Yeah, it is. And yeah, it shouldn't be the whole focus of China. They shouldn't just focus on these bad things. But the fact of the matter is, those things are actually true. Yes. Chinese, Chinese people do eat dog. You know, you in the beginning, you're like, oh, I don't see people eating dog around me. They're just blowing it out of proportion. You know, they're just trying to make China look bad. More longer you stay in China, the more dog meat restaurants you see, the more openly you see dog carcasses hanging around. And, you know, you start to say, yeah, you know what? They kind of do eat dog. Right. It's just, 
it's that, but being diplomatic about it is very important. That's yeah. why we do what we do. We don't go around and say every single person does absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right? Of course, absolutely. there's tons of people that don't even know it exists in China. Mm. That's the disconnect, right? Yeah. We've seen the top. We've seen the bottom. Sure. We've seen the middle, mostly the middle. We've seen the entire country, and we understand what the reality on the ground is at this point. And we also understand what it's like at the PLA level, at the government level, when you have to directly interact with them mm -hmm. and see what they're they're trying to do to you. Yeah. Like behind the scenes, when you have friends in the government that tell you stuff, sure. Then you really, oh, you really wake up. You're not like a little, you're not like a little uh, tourist on sure, the ground, sure. Going to look at the Forbidden City, you know. Mm -hmm. It's different. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up just real quick. Peter Blantasic, do you think there is a bedrock cultural cause for this one person, one party rule? Are Chinese people more accepting of strongman politics, like she's quasi imperial setup? I think yes. Uh, dynasties have always been imperial. Sure. Um, Nothing's changed. As, uh, I've said this a million times. CCP is just another dynasty. It didn't have a massive political change. It's not that different than the way China used to run. Yeah, I mean, look, they tried to copy Russia, the right. Soviet Union, I should say, in every way, shape or form. Right. Even like embalming Mao, like Lenin was embalmed. Yeah. And, you know, just like it was carbon copy. Yeah. All the propaganda, everything. They're Government just, buildings. Yeah. It, it was a bad copy, just like a bad Chinese knockoff of an electronic product. That's kind of what they did with the CCP. It was CC, the door. C, 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 P, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they just took one C out of there, you know, yes. just like when they spell Nike with a Y instead of an I or something. And that's kind of what you ended up with. And it <laughs> still remained all the, with all the Chinese characteristics. Sure. And it's only getting worse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Grady, our man, uh, my students asked me today why the CCP wouldn't want doctors and virologists to come to China to help. Easy answer. Nobody can talk about what they aren't allowed in to see, control the situation. It's exactly Absolutely. true. That's exactly Very well said. Uh, Lisa Fern, uh, your insights are helpful. I have a son living in Taichung. I hope he doesn't get the thing. Um, yeah, I think we'll be okay. It. Taiwan's probably Taiwan's, got a good lid on Taiwan's this. great. They, they've got themselves sorted out. And if something does happen there, they will take the correct measures. It was crazy because when I had moved there from China, from Guangdong, and I went to Taiwan, I just had, had nightmare scenarios in the doctors and hospitals. And I go to Taiwan, and I was like, more of the same. Nope. Mm -hmm. Straight up, like, American-level quality healthcare. Yeah, and it's it was free. amazing. And it's free, too, with your ARC. Mm -hmm. uh, Winnie the Flu is a real virus, and I think we'll end on that. Absolutely. Mm, absolutely agree. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting us. This is definitely demonetized, so I appreciate that. Um, and I guess we'll see, you guys will see Winston on Friday. Yep. He's going to do a, a really poignant topic. Yeah, I've been trying to get it together in my head. I'm filming and editing it tomorrow, so it'll be ready on Friday. Can't wait for you guys to see it. It's something you have to see. Yes. I'm going to come clean yes. about a lot of things. Um, wish me some good rest. Hopefully I can yeah. get some rest and yeah. wish my kids better health. Absolutely. Uh, really They'll get sucky. better. They'll get better. I want to say thank you so much, Lowenders, and I'll catch you on the next one. Don't buy these. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Bye. <laughs> See you guys around. Have a good one. Cheers.